Indeed, we are staying with this story. Of course, as uh, you heard a little earlier on, Israeli forces have reportedly killed 50 or at least over 50 Palestinians, wounding nearly 2,000 others as the Israeli army fired live ammunition, tear gas and firebombs at protesters assembled along several points near the fence with Israel. It's prompted Kuwait to request an emergency meeting of the UN Security Council. South Africa, as you heard earlier, has withdrawn its ambassador. Well, we're joined now in the studio by uh, Wits University's Professor John Stremlar. Good evening to you. Uh, I mean, I suppose the first thing we need to talk about is America's role as a peace broker in the Middle East uh, situation. Whatever facade of neutrality they're trying to build up over years has surely been broken now. Absolutely, and it was always difficult given the strength of the Israeli lobby and the Israeli, Israeli alliance with the United States. But this gratuitous moving of the symbolic moving of the embassy to Jerusalem is a total sham. As your correspondent uh, remarked, the embassy is still in Tel Aviv. 850 people are there, just uh, Ambassador Friedman and the flag is the sign has been moved to Jerusalem. Why Trump would choose to do this on the 70th anniversary of the right of return back in 1948 when, when West Bank and Gaza were set up as, as Israeli Bantu stands. And now with the deprivation in those areas to have inflamed this, Trump does not, he's a showman, he doesn't understand that the symbolism in politics matters and people get killed when the symbols are all wrong. And this symbol is a disastrous symbol. I mean, absolutely, symbolism does matter. You know, we would have expected that such a move would be met with opposition. But as you say, the timing of it couldn't have been more provocative, certainly from the Palestinian point of view. Well, certainly from the Palestinian point of view, and if I can just try to analyze this a little bit, since Trump has no understanding or grounding in policy, the status of Jerusalem was always a final settlement issue because it is so hard. The ideal for Jerusalem is an international city that is open and free to all who want to pray there, be they Muslim, Jews, Christians, or anyone else, and that they should not have a, a, a sectarian theocratic domination by one sect. And that's what Israel is doing, you know. Israel occupied this in 1967. The original UN demarcation was to build toward an international city that would be welcoming for all united in its diversity. But that's not what's happening now. Where does this leave the UN? Of course, there were preparations underway to get uh, what, what was being called the Great March of Return. Uh, many Palestinians wanting to remind the world of UN Resolution 194. Where does it leave that body now? Well, it leaves that body as, as close to irrelevant, at least on the ground. That is those uh, 35,000 demonstrators in Gaza and the 100 plus that have been killed. Uh, uh, they, they suffer grievously as the Palestinians have for 70 years because the world lacks the resolve. And, you know, I fault America. I, don't, I can't fault South Africa in recalling the ambassador was the right move to make, but South Africa's leverage is preciously limited, as we know, and acting collectively, David Mabusa is in Moscow. He should be talking to the Russians about this and appealing to the BRICS members as well. Everyone who is, uh, hates injustice, uh, as I think South Africans really do in their bones, this is a very unjust circumstance. I mean, how much has Benjamin Netanyahu been emboldened by this Trump White House? We're seeing today live ammunition being fired on unarmed protesters. Well, again, this points to the stupidity of the Trump move because everyone knows that this was a card that a peace pro negotiator in a complex negotiation would play at the very end. The status of Jerusalem was the prize that the competing forces wanted to be sure their interests were protected. And Trump gave away this plum to Netanyahu, who got nothing in return. Netanyahu is a hard right and a politician who's under shadow of corruption as well. And he gloats at this moment. And I suspect that Vladimir Putin, in his own way, also takes pleasure for the divisions within the alliance, the Western alliance, the Democratic alliance, that this also fosters by the demagogic, demagoguery of Donald Trump on this issue during the campaign and now with the act. Let's look at what is happening on the ground. Uh, if you 
sort of go a different direction on this issue. Uh, would you say that from a Palestinian point of view, we've seen uh, Mahmoud Abbas all but become ineffective in recent years. Has the strategy of Hamas uh, to take on more directly the military machine, uh, the military might of uh, the Israeli uh, you know, uh, army, has, has that strategy worked for the Palestinians? What could possibly work when you've got stone throwers against the Israeli Air Force and, 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 and drones dropping canisters of tear gas on demonstrators who are basically unarmed? The White House will say, uh, your correspondent could have referred back to two days ago, where they said, from the deputy uh, press secretary said, that um, uh, the, the, the violence that Hamas perpetrates makes them illegitimate, she said, that uh, peaceful demonstrations America applauds. Now, when you think of the military might and use of force of the United States, the hypocrisy of ascribing to basically disempowered Palestinians who have desperation only to turn to. So, you know, I don't contain, con condone violence under any circumstances, but if there was a circumstance where you can understand why people would do what they do, think of being 70 years in, in the worst kind of Bantustan or, uh, uh, imaginable. Well, for more than a decade, as we know, a land, sea, and air blockade, exactly as you say, has turned Gaza into a virtual prison. Professor John Sturmler, uh, thank you for your analysis and your comments this evening. That is, of course, uh, Witzel University's uh, political uh, analyst and expert there. Now